So before we jump in with some tactica, building that checklist, sharing some ideas with Rodri Ironheart, we want to look at the god tiers themselves, um, unique to the game, not only in narrative, but compared to other skirmish games to help frame it. This idea, think of them as terrain that is moving and adjusting as one plays on the battlefield. And depending on the mission, uh, life being a great example, the first mission in the core rules, the god tiers literally mutate and spread out. So if you lose the round, you at least have an advantage in terms of placement. What this means is area denial is very, very important, is vital in the game. I mean, that's just kind of a general tactica in any type of skirmish game, uh, but especially in a game where you score primary points for planting your banner, but also removing those points by kicking over the banners of other champions. So if you have this spawn chain of god tiers and you can uh, plant on there or have an ability, say like um, Warnbane, where he can plant up to three away a banner, that's huge. That's huge. So we want to look at area denial. And most of the area denial in the game uh, is what I would call kickbacks. You have an ability, you beat the agility, and you get to move a model back X number of hexes uh, magically or push them back or enthrall them. I mean, different narratives with how it works. But Rordry is interesting uh, as a dwarf, very thematic. The area denial um, with him is the raw power of working with the champion working with his warband literally to throw up um, plus one armor. So right in my, for that turn to just kind of automatically uh, gain an extra or absorb an extra hit, depending on how you look at it. And a large amount of wounds for the champion, but even for the support, strong, strong armor. So that means two things have to happen. You have to be hitting really, really strong. You have to have a champion that hits really, really strong. Now, maybe you build your warband if you're playing two or three on each side with a slayer. Maybe you're going all in on certain colors, certain tactica. But you're definitely not going in all slayers. We could do mono build. But if you take those slayers and throw them against the dwarves, that's a commitment. That's a commitment. And with the armor and life, it's going to take you a little while to chew through. That's going to take out that, that Slayer and that Warband from that Tactica in the game. Now, of course, yes, you could always get lucky. Some of the champions that can put out a decent amount of damage, uh, fours and fives, after you've wounded, so rolling for wounds, you get lucky on the dice, you get lucky on the dice. I mean, that's just kind of tabletop 101. You roll legendary, I roll legendary, you can't really stop that. So you can't... Um, you can't count on that or you can't let that scare you tactically. You can do things to, to mitigate it by trying to buff your units, buff your characters. But we're going to put aside that legendary role for a minute. You're going to have to commit. So this is the area denial aspect in that if you plant yourself in an area, you're going to be able to control that area. It's going to take a lot to really knock you off the table and, and the whole time... Rordry's attacking, uh, he's kicking down banners, his guard, shield guards, are they're fighting too. It's a commitment to get rid of them. But let's talk also about the pacing. The pacing and how the narrative and the theme fits that pacing and, and the tactics on the table. So in your initial phase, they move one. He moves one. Um, you can then use the march to gain another movement. So it's pretty much one or two movement. If you use the march, you can't use the other actions, and you probably want to buff. So you probably want to move on and buff. In the second phase, you flip over. Now you have two movement, but also the ability to move. So what this means is they are slow with the ability to be fast. Um, if your opponent, if your opponent is committing, this means they have to extend out. They have to extend out. Because, again, you have the ability to move one and then two if you need it. I mean, you know, if you have to hot-foot it across the table for some objectives or to really be in a, in a, a good place. So it's not that it's a very, very slow unit. It's just going to cost you other activations compared to other units that are maybe two or three or have faster abilities. So you do have that ability to be where you have to be. But the natural movement of being one pace means as you slowly plod across the battlefield the skirmish board, the tabletop, 
If your opponent's going to want to reach you to get in range, either with a close attack or a ranged attack, especially if they're slayers, they're going to have to come out and meet you. It's almost like they're, they're, um, the positioning of Rordry makes it so that other warbands want to dissipate or extend themselves or pull out. And that's the last thing that you want to do. It's almost like you want a ring of champions all operating close by. So not only if like one side starts to fold, you can support it, but this, this free synergy or using champions to gang up to go out and meet the opposing champion, especially if you're a slayer, that's the duality. The slayers, they want to get those bonus points. Yeah, I want to plant the banner, but I also want to knock out champions. So that means every turn, if I burn a turn, not getting those points that puts my opponent, the other side, in a position to win based on the sliding scoring. So I, I, I want to run across the table. I want to get over there as fast as I can and start smashing on you. And then when I knock you out, I want to push you back. And when you res back up, I want to smash you down again. It's going to take a little while to get across there. And again, combined with the anchor point, it's it's he's like an action sink. He forces your opponents to sink in the action. I don't want to say not a dynamic war band to play. Again, very thematic, like totally matches the miniatures, totally um, nailed it. It feels like you're playing like a, a dwarven clan, dwarven warriors. But the idea of area denial, a tank, absorbing those hits, slow moving, that anchor point is absolutely key. Um, I also find uh, we're going to talk about deployment. We're going to talk about a couple of ideas uh, that are strategies to that. I'm going to mention it a little bit. We're going to follow those up in part two and push them up to my God tier playlist here. But um, think of uh, think of your war band with the champion and the followers, minions, whatever we want to call them, summons. They work as one group. They want to work together. Almost like think of them as a mini army. So if you're playing three on three, I've got three little mini armies on the table one of the ways to um, force the dice, right? I want to gang up on the dice. I want to use the dice, biggest dice pool, is a refused flank. If I put one warband in the middle, one on the left, one on the right, that's an even spread. I'm going to kind of move out. If I load up all on one side, that does strengthen that side. Because remember, it's a physical gaming table. You're limited by um, your deployment zone in the beginning based on the mission, but you're also limited physically by the tabletop. So if I push myself all the way over to the right side of the table, my right side of the table, I gang up my three war bands there, again, depending on the mission, if it's advantageous, I'm limiting the approach. You can't approach me from, if it's my right side, it's your left side, you can't approach me from that side because I'm physically up against the table edge. It limits it. But it also limits me because now it's compressing. It's compressing me a little bit. You generally want to be radiating from the center. The challenge with that is if I take my warband in the center and then either on the right or the left stack the other two warbands, that opens me up for a flank. That opens me up to, to have you attack with two warbands on the one side to my one. A refused flank is where I don't give that to you. If I put Rordry there, if I put those dwarves there, then his just sheer tankiness, um, a, a, literally like a shield wall, literally puts that up, hold the center. And then my other two warbands, especially if they're fast in support, they're just going to tear things up because I'm going to area deny you moving past and just do what I have to do. So extremely, extremely tactical, maybe not all over the place, fast moving, fast supporting, you know, throwing around buffs, but um, of a solid, an absolutely solid, solid, solid warband.